This is my Sony a6700 and in this video we are going to be talking about a film simulation recipe for the Sony a6700 and by film simulation let's talk about what I mean by that. So if you've shot with any Fujifilm camera like for myself I've shot with the Fuji X-T200. So one of the cool things that I absolutely love about this camera right here is its ability to do film simulation. So let's give a little bit of context. So it's basically a baked in picture profile or color style into the image. So for some professional photographers, we like to shoot in raw, right? Because it gives us capabilities to just change the white balance, uh, recover shadows, or possibly even highlights if they're not too blown out. But film simulation basically just gives you a set look straight out of camera without having to shoot in raw. Okay, so first things first, press menu over here and make sure that your file format is JPEG and not raw because again, we're doing the film simulation recipe. Press okay. And for JPEG quality, there are different kinds. I suggest to leave it on extra fine. And for the JPEG image size, we're gonna put it on 13 megapixels. We already discussed why, so just click that. And now for aspect ratio, we're going to be leaving it on three by two. And now go to this tab over here, which is exposure and color. And now we're going to only touch color tone over here. So first things first, we're going to be talking about the D range optimizer. D range stands for dynamic range. So this one, most of the time, if you're shooting raw, we're definitely going to switch this off. But since we're going to be doing everything in camera, when it comes to shooting JPEG, right? So we're gonna be taking advantage of all the inbuilt settings that the A6700 has. So I've played around with the level five option because it's like adding artificial contrast, right? Because it's just doing the shadow boost in camera. And I tried level five and it's, I think it's a little bit too much. So level three is the sweet spot for me. So you just click that. And now we're gonna be going to creative look. So for creative look, this is where the magic happens. I want you to go to portrait, the PT option, and just press right. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna be, gonna be lowering the contrast by three stops. We're gonna put it on negative three. And then the next one, it's very easy. You're gonna be lowering the highlights by negative one. And for shadows, we're gonna increase it by plus three. For fade, we're gonna be putting plus one. For saturation, we're going to be lowering it by just negative one. Sharpness, we're going to be putting it all the way down. And for sharpness range, we're going to be putting it all the way down. And for clarity, we're going to be leaving it on zero. So that's basically it. There are no fancy settings. It's just plain old editing the picture profile settings in camera to get a particular looking image without having to edit the raw files. So with this workflow, it's just super time efficient. You don't need to edit anything when you do get home. You just get the photo straight out of camera as if you're shooting film. That's why it's called film simulation recipe, right? So I've used this recipe uh, last month when my wife and my daughter and I went to the Philippines. I just shot JPEG. I did not shoot raw. So it feels so good inside because I don't have that burden of have to edit all the raw files after coming home from a very tiring holiday, right? Uh, whenever I'm not shooting professionally, I actually shoot in church. I shoot photos, I shoot videos. So the, the turnaround time is very fast. So one of the media coordinators in our church will be asking for the photos, maybe on the same day that I took them or possibly the next day. So having a quick workflow is just very imperative. It's very important to, for me to be able to just send out photos without having to switch on the computer or Lightroom to edit everything. So the workflow with JPEGs, is a lot more easier than shooting with RAW. So I'm actually very proud of these settings that I found with my A6700 because it just makes everything a lot easier. Of course, if I'm shooting professionally, I'm never gonna be using these settings. I could use it as a base if I were to shoot RAW, just having a baseline. So when the photos do come out, maybe they're gonna be usable on that point. But if I do need to tweak something, if it was in RAW, right? So I can just edit it that way. But for travel, I'll just leave it on JPEG. I don't wanna edit anything after a tiring holiday. So that is it for me, guys. This was just a quick video talking about my film simulation recipe for the A6700 inspired by the Fujifilm X-T200. So if you have any further questions, leave them in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.